not going to be reading because it's dark, right? Why dark here? So I'm going to uh, just try to recapitulate what I was writing in the book we are going to present today. Uh, it's the title of the book is Culture of the Selfie, and uh, it just went out of, uh, it was just printed with the Institute of Network Cultures. And many thanks to here, Tandonike, for working on this uh, small book. I suppose you are going to be seeing over here around in a printed edition. So, what I was concerned when trying to analyze selfies is if you can put the first uh, image. Yeah. Uh, I was concerned with the selfies and the images online I was seeing in regard to the places that have been recorded. I come from a photographic family, and Emily, my grandfather and father were both photographers, and my grandfather was a war photographer, so I, I was used on some kind of very violent images in our photo albums too. But some of these violences I was seeing online was quite new to me. So one of these images was a selfie recorded in Lebanon at the moment when there was a bomb explosion. This type of turning the back to the accident that was going behind the back was quite a new situation for me because uh, the war photography was always orientated the same direction as the weapons are. It was targeting the situations which were out of control and the situations which were endangering. So this situation in which there is a crude reality behind the back, uh, can you turn it another one? Yeah. Or there is some kind of reality which is seeing nonsensical to the person self-reporting uh, or the person self-recording, like Brennan Mitchell's uh, recording in front of uh, Holocaust uh, uh, buildings in Auschwitz, was the second type of these uh, selfies that are really bothering me. Can you uh, do, yeah, the next one. There is a plenty of these images in which selfies are also recorded with dead people. If we compare this type of imagery of uh, self-portraits or selfies with corpses to 19th century self-portraits or portraits with dead children or dead members of the family in Victorian uh, type of uh, uh, mortuary photography, there are quite big differences. And the differences are actually in the matter that the corpse is suddenly behind the back. If you compare self-portraits uh, of the 19th century with the children, which are quite uh, disgusting in our age, but they were quite ordinary back in that time because photography was quite expensive, first of all, and usually families did not have a family uh, picture and the child would die before having a proper image. They would just bring the dead child along to make a, a family portrait. The second reason why 19th century photography preferred dead people and corpses, it was the exposure was quite long, so there were much more preferred objects for photographers because of the exposure of 15 minutes in which a lot of people would really make a mess in the image because they would blink or move. So there is something uh, relating between uh, contemporary images with dead people and 19th century images with dead people. But the relationship to dead people is completely new. Now the dead people are finding their place behind the back of a person self-reporting. Can we go on? Yeah. And then there are plenty of images which are also doing reporting in a CNN type of view, in which we can follow the rhizomes of this culture of selfies, which is reporting the road behind the back. It is a type of imagery which we used to see for the last 20 years in CNN reports, for example, media reports, in which there is a journalist reporting on a very big catastrophe, but reporting it as neutral and as, as if something uh, which is background of the story and the real story is actually happening in the media. And this type of reality which has been mediated and which is pushed behind the back somehow loses the capacity to threaten. And moreover, it seems that the reporter reporting in the selfie or in this type of mediated imagery is also trying to detach from reality. So, can we go? Also, there are tourist selfies and if we try to conclude or draw connections to the reality behind the back, there is uh, no real experience of this type of reality. So if there is no real experience of this type of reality once that the situation is really shocking for someone who is reporting or self-reporting, 
and if there is something terrifying he needs to face. What is the problem with a real, beautiful reality when selfies are being recorded this way? Well? Why now, again, the reality is being <coughs> behind the back of a person? So I'm going to speak about this uh, problem through the art history, which is my domain of analysis. God, please. So the starting point, as I told you, is that I come from the family of photographers. On the left side, you will see the picture of my grandfather self-reporting. <laughs> self he is the drunkish guy with the messy hair. On the left side, on the right side, it's my father. Uh, a, my grandfather has done the first image in the studio of his teacher. Uh, he was an apprentice uh, to photographer Borovic. And during the night, he and his friends, they were 16 by the time, they got drunk, they opened the studio, they made a report, and they left the negative in the camera. So the next morning, uh, his boss got really angry. The second image is by my father, who has done the same to his father. So he has made the picture in the studio, left it in the camera. So when my grandfather went developing photos of portraits of people, for the next day he has found this Napoleonish crazy <laughs> image. So this was a very intimate communication among photographer to photographer. What here we can see is there is no world behind. The report on themselves and the report on the situation they found in directly to someone who is being addressed by the photo. And the problem I want to emphasize here is that some portraits are made for besides self storing in a kind of physical, digital media of reporting, also for communicating to other people. So we can continue. Uh, the problem of the self in visual culture is quite interesting. Uh, it goes together with the development of science. So I'm not going to speak about history of science here, but only put some a little bit of inputs so you can try to connect them together. So the development of perspe perspective in the Renaissance culture here in Italy uh, was meaning a lot also to try to all attempts of discovering self and trying to first time report about oneself. So you can, yeah. The development of mirror was one of the first reasons why the subculture has started to emerge and also the moment in which this image in the mirror was deponed in a storing media. The first storing media was of course painting. But when we go to paintings and compare them to surface today, these painted self-portraits do not look like self-portraits anymore. They look like portraits of the self because they are describing the self inside the other media and there is no continuity of perception and continuity of production, contrary to selfies in which there is a perfect loop in which a person sees and records or sees records himself. We can go. One of the first portraits, and it is really important and pretty much analyzed, so I'm not going to give, go much really deep inside of it because there are so many texts about it, is Jan van Eyck and Malfini couple. The reason why this self-portrait uh, is important is, as you know, that in the mirror that appears above the hands of the couple which are about to be married, at the place where there is usually a pigeon as a holy ghost, there is a mirror. And this mirror is a mirror that is concave, in which you can see, you can see another image, or actually the image depicting two persons in the background of the place that viewers are finding themselves. So you can see the drawing on the other side. How do we anticipate the place of the viewer? If we don't see the painter in front of us, or the self-portrait of the painter in front, like in Madrid, for example, then the place of the viewer is someone in the back. So the viewer is set in front of two persons being self-portrait or portrait, and they are appearing in the back of the mirror. What is very important here is that the person that is self-portrait is seeing a room. So basically, we are having a rise of perspective with this portrait. You see the lines of perspective. We have the objective world, and there is trace of a person which is subjectivizing the space somewhere in the middle. But the whole space is not subjectivized. It is completely objective, and it is laid as a perfect architecture. There are two spaces here which are very important. The first place we see is the place in which... Is it having a lot of echo here? Uh, the first place is the space in which we are seeing uh, two persons, and this space is objectivized, and it is laid out as 
very perspectival space which will lead to the development of science. And the second space is the space in the mirror, and this space is curved. So ideology of the Renaissance space rising with the architecture as well, which is objectifying and it's suddenly trying to uh, clean away this um, cover of the medieval uh, mystification is in conflict to the image we see in the mirror and image in the mirror is a controlling mirror. So this type of the mirror you see in the back is the mirror today we see at gas stations or in some shops. It is the mirror that you can follow the whole room inside and see if someone is stealing. It is the surveillance mirror and this type of mirror itself is basically medieval. It goes from the medieval idea of the omnipotent eye, which is controlling the whole room at the same time, the whole space. So it is still used as such. So there are two ideologies conflicting in this image. The objective one, which is giving rise and input to science, and this obscure one, which reflects itself and is actually reflecting the ideology of reflection of medieval times. Why? Because the mirror well, was not invented in a way that we use it today. So, speaking about self-portraits all the time, people, and there were also expensive mirrors, people had no possibility to see themselves. Uh, or actually, they had the possibility to see themselves only in the water. So, or if they had the possibility to see themselves, they could see themselves only as we see ourselves when we look into the spoon, completely distorted. So, we can go to another one. Another very interesting image, and here we have a flat mirror already, is the Velázquez Las Meninas, which was pretty much analyzed. This image is paradoxical. It means that actually Velázquez, who is painting the whole painting, and we see him on the left side, is finding himself in a very impossible situation. The situation is that he is looking to someone who is reflecting in the back, in the mirror. Foucault was writing about this, and Steinberg. So, he is uh, looking to the royal couple. There are two ideologies here. One of them is the ideology of the audience. First of all, we were not supposed to see this image because the image was painted for the royal couple. And the reason why a royal couple appears in the image is because they were commissioned in the image and the image was for the private purposes. The reason that we are now finding ourselves in the paradox is that the image has found a way to public collection, but basically it was not meant for our eyes. So that's the first problem. The second problem is that Velázquez is sitting and looking to us and we see Las Meninas. And, it, and when we look to this image, there is something pretty wrong. The light comes from the right side. And the logic of looking in European culture is usually when light comes from the left side. So if you invert this image, you will find that this image matches the images of the young Infanta, which he was painting at other places. So, according to my interpretation, actually the image is flipped. So, it is painted in the mirror itself. So, we are the mirror to the image that is appearing because the image seems to be flipped. There are plenty of interpretations actually which are replacing the actors in this image and none of them is working. Steinbeck has proven only that the only plausible way that the painter could paint the world behind the back which he is doing, and because everyone is, the room is behind his back, it would be that he is at our place, but I see it as the mirror being at our place, not us, actually. So we can continue. Then another mystification happened when this uh, omni, omni viewing uh, mirror was replaced by another type of the mirror, the other side of the spoon and that is Parmigianino's uh, insight into convex mirror. So this mirror suddenly was showing something which is distorting the view uh, on objects that are near. And then there is no space behind Parmigianino suddenly. But this is the rise also to the modern self. Because since this moment in painting, we see uh, that the reporting self is not anymore subject subjectivizing the space and trying to describe it by the relationship to yourself, which is a perspective. But it is a moment in which the self is being objectivized. So this shift from sub subjectivizing the space to objectivizing self in modern times, I think, has started precisely with this. 
because since Parmigianino in cell cortex there is no more background in the imagery, there is only an affection of and trying to catch up the mood, uh, the identity, or the other types of descriptions of self till nowadays. So we can. Uh, so this is the comparison of the detail. <coughs> Go more. This is modernist self. This is Margaret Cameron and the way that they are making self-portrait scenes from Giannino. Uh, the self-portrait since the time uh, when this image was inverted were not reporting anymore on the, any type of reality. They were just reporting on a person, uh, the relationship of a person to oneself, the relationship of a person to the uh, anticipated audience or uh, attempts of a person to define moods, uh, facial characteristics and so on. So suddenly there was uh, the whole story around the narrative I disappearing, the whole context. And that is what we have revived with selfies. So we can just yeah, go. This is a postmodern self as well. So the same thing happens with Marcel Duchamp or with Morimura. They all report on themselves, their identity is different way the identity is being defined in modernist or postmodern art, but still they do not refer to any type of objective world or the world behind the back as self is do. So we can go. What we do have with selfies is suddenly that, uh, this is just a digression, that the viewer is being set at the other place than the viewer is being found in paintings before. Now there is no space for the viewer because this mirror that is being used as mirror media or mobile as mirror media is now suddenly eliminating the space for the viewer in terms of placement. So the viewer is also finding a place between the mirroring media and the person that is self-recording. So it's very claustrophobic in that terms. Can go. So this is Magritte's self-portrait just to have another digression in which we can anticipate that there is a, a yeah, we can anticipate that this self-portrait was positioning the author in front of in front of the canvas, but actually there is a distortion of the mirror in the space. Another one. This is a, a one of these first mirror-related portraits in which the mirrors are showing different you can move the different distortions of reality and different descriptions of reality. So it is actually a photo montage. You can go. What I wanted to say in this mirror-related reality, with this uh, a quick uh, overview of mirrors, is that there is a certain type of paradigm shift in using the mirror. We've been used to refer to some portraits in terms of narcissism, and it's uh, due to writings of Lush as well, the culture of narcissism, that the same portraits are being related through this type of uh, uh, disorder. But there is an, another interesting myth which can be used for analyzing the way that some portraits are being made nowadays, and that is the myth of Perseus. As you know, Perseus was actually using the mirror shield to control the reality behind his back, and that was a Gorgon Medusa. That way he has managed to kill a Gorgon. So this type of undirect report of reality, of mirroring of reality, just to be able to control it is something I would like to propose as another paradigm, paradigm of age, uh, which is using some portraits. I don't know the reasons precisely why the world is suddenly appearing reported from the back. Um, it is not anymore finding itself inside the perspective like we have been seeing with uh, Jan van Eyck or Velasquez. The reason I can anticipate is that the reality has been mediated for a while and it's really hard to go back to reality and it is really a painful experience for some newer generations to get in a real time space. So it comes as a report of something that is being from the back. It's much easier to view it. So these would be drawings showing the relationship of this mimicry that appears be between the reality and report, yeah, but, yeah, between Persus and Narcissus. While Narcissus is at the same time participating in the real space 
and at the same time controlling the image. Perseus is using the image to control the reality. So the mediation, the whole reality has shifted to another side of, of the coin, into the media, and there is no need for the real reality. There is only a need for the mediated reality. So here is some summary of what I've been speaking. So instead of this, uh, there is a shift between subjectification of the object and the environment into objectification of self in the modern times, you can go on. And there is something I wanted to show you uh, more. If we try to erase people from these self-portraits during the times of the birth of perspective, it seems that nothing is happening and there is no difference in the value of the image on the informational level. This is Mantegna's uh, uh, Christ in Temple. His self-portrait was somewhere in the right angle. It was erased from the image. I've done it just to check if there is something changing when you erase a person. The same happens with the Courbet's painting of himself in, inside the studio. If you erase a uh, figure of a painter, there is no informational loss in the image. Of course, there is a decorative loss. <laughs> and also happens with contemporary selfies. If you raise the person, you still have the environment. It would be impossible with paintings or photographs from the modern period. If you would be erasing Marcel Duchamp from his Rose Salavi, there would be nothing. If you would be erasing Margaret Cameron from her pictures, there would be just nothing, just black background. So this is the difference, I would say, it's very crucial, and that's the mediation of reality behind the back that is being reported. So if I would need to put a definition in front, it would be that selfies are actually reports of the mediated reality rather than reflections on oneself. Thank you very much.